in this lecture, we're gonna be talking about the central limit theorem for sums. Now in the last lecture, we talked about the central limit theorem. So in this lecture, we're gonna be talking about how the central limit theorem for sums is just a little bit different. So let me uh, give you guys a real life example of the central limit theorem for sums and explain how this relates to the central limit theorem. Suppose we have um, IQ scores distributed such that the average was 100 and the standard deviation is 16. Now this is actually how it works. These are IQ scores. The average is 100 and the standard deviation is 16. Now let me remind you guys what the uh, central limit theorem states. If we pulled a bunch of different samples where each of these samples has a total of 10 people, every single one of them, The idea is the central limit theorem says that the averages of all these samples, if we took the average of all of these samples and we created a histogram for these samples or for those averages, we would get more or less a normal distribution. And the larger the sample sizes, the more the uh, distribution becomes normal or bell curvy ish. And so, again, if I were to plot these sample averages on a distribution, it would look a lot like a bell curve. But the idea is as we make these numbers right here bigger, and again, they all have to be the same in this case, if we make all of these numbers, let's say 20, then the corresponding averages would then get even not only closer together, but they would be more normally distributed. So uh, that's what the central limit theorem says. Now let's talk about the central limit theorem for um, Let's talk about the central limit theorem for sums, which is a little bit different. Uh, it's basically the same exact thing. Instead of saying that the averages are more normally distributed as the sample sizes get larger, it talks about the sum of the values. Oops, that's a backwards sum. So if I take the sum of all the values in here, if I, if I add up for every sample, I add up all the IQ scores, then each of these numbers, all of those sums, would also be more normally distributed as the sample sizes get larger. So it's very, very similar to the, standard, uh, for, to the central limit theorem, but the idea is instead of the averages being normally distributed, it's the sums of the values that are normally distributed. So that's what the central limit theorem for sums are. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next lecture.